Uh, one of uh, the speaker, I think, is that uh, Professor uh, Morigo mentioned uh, early on. Um, um, this is a two nerve that sometimes can be quite tricky. Uh, not because uh, may not be because of the size, uh, probably because there's a lot of variation, and because of the cost of a nerve is not strict down. It just keeps changing in the orientation. This two nerve, uh, one is lateral femoral cutaneous, the other is a pudendo. So this is what I'm going to talk about my disclosure slide. And so lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, why we need to know about this, because uh, as an anesthesiologist, we usually get referral for the diagnosis and the treatment in the patient who have a myalgia paristica. Um, this is a painful mononeuropathy of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. As a matter of fact, this is one of the most common and tremor neuropathy of the lower limb. And if you look at the incidence, it's around 4.3 per 10,000 uh, person years. Well, let's talk about the anatomy. So this is what commonly described as the anatomical anatomy. Sorry, um, so this is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve coming from the lateral aspect of the psoas muscle. Usually it come on the surface of the iliacus muscle. At this level, usually it wrap around by two fascia. And then the typical anatomy is you go underneath the inguinal canal medial to the ASIS. And then the job description is called lateral femoral cutaneous. So we have to go to lateral. So it then cross to the lateral aspect. In between this, uh, uh, what Dr. Morigo mentioned, this is a fat filled groove between the sartorius and the tensia fasciolata. And then here it divides into the posterior and anterior branch. Should be quite easy, straightforward. Um, and this is like the cross section that when we look at the cross section and the inguinal canal, inguinal uh, ligament. So uh, you will see there's a sartorius. Uh, it can be over the sartorius muscle. It can be on superficial to the alicus muscle, usually in between the two fascia. The problem is there's a lot of variation. So um, I look at the literature. I think in the last 15 years, there's probably 12 articles published on the different variations. So I just summarized some of this for you. First, um, the, the nerve here at the inguinal ligament level, well, usually we think it's one branch or one nerve. It can be divided into five branches up to 28%. So this is one of the, the pictures. So it's a lateral, medial, so it's articus muscle, sartorius. So you can see actually there's a lot of bubble there. So this actually is at the inguinal, uh, studied below the inguinal uh, ligament level. And then you can see just so many branches over there. The second thing is actually the distance between the ASIS. So we believe it's just a little bit medial, just a little bit medial. But if you look at all the literature, uh, it's between 0 0.6 centimeter, just means actually just close to ASIS, to 7 centimeter over there. So the range of finding the nerve can be quite huge. And then we tend to believe that it's always medial to the ASIS, but it's not necessary. Um, it happened only, uh, well, it, in 40, up to even 30% of the individual, you can find this over the ASIS or even posterior to the ASIS. I think this is very important to understand that but, uh, because of some clinical relevance. So here is the adequate, the anterior, posterior. So that is a big uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve right there, sit on top, not medial. The other thing is uh, we tend to believe that usually it is on top a superficial to the alicus muscle or sartorius muscle, but the, sometimes it can be uh, quite deep and even go inside and deep into the sartorius muscle. So if you try to look something, look for something superficial to the sartorius muscle, you may not get it because it's already go inside the muscle. Um, so this is actually one of the pictures. So it's lateral medial, so sartorius muscle. I expect this is a, uh, this is alicus muscle, so it's a fascia lata. There's another fascia over the alicus muscle with fascia lata here. Professor Alicus here. So I believe that, uh, that we can find a nerve here, but this is actually where you find the uh, lateral femoral cutaneous. As a matter of fact, uh, if you trace a little bit more distal, this one dive into the, dive into the muscle. So this is actually the type of variation that you, you will see. Now, I just don't want to just talk about the injection without talking about a good clinical practice. We can just uh, have a patient with uh, myalgia parasitica. We can just do many, many injections. But there's just two things that you probably can do a good service to the patient by removing some of the etiological factor. Now, um, in Canada, we like muffin, so I don't know if you heard about it. It's called the muffin top syndrome. So um, let me just explain a little bit about the anatomy. So 
this is the abdomen, anterior abdominal wall, so this is uh, the hip. So it is actually where the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve coming between the two fascia and then come down here and also rub between the two fascia. What happened in this is in, in North America, uh, a lot of patients are quite well nourished. And so think about this and the muffin top. So that what happened with this muffin top phenomenon? This is the tummy. So it basically dragged down. And with this, actually, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve come here. It caused a lot of compression. And if you don't ask a patient to have some, to reduce some body weight, you can keep it doing the injection or actually even do, uh, do the surgery, but you're not doing the patient a favor. Um, this, this slide will you up. So this is actually is a, uh, we call the low, I don't know, low rise gene or, uh, well, I, I don't know, I would never wear those, but. Um, <laughs> Our, our Canadian Medical Association journal actually have a warning about the epidemic, about the myalgia paroxysmica, and they talk about exactly this because of the increased popularity. You see all these young girls, they are wearing this, even young boy, actually. So what will happen is, think about this. I just talk about one of the possibilities when the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve can be on top or even posterior to ASIS. So what if you have a very tight gene called, we call hip hugger, that hug the nerve. And so this is one of the variations. So it is when the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve sit on top of the other crest. And when you have a tight gene and you sit down, get up, and keep rubbing your nerve, and this is what will happen. So this actually is a young, young lady who actually is a light dose hip hugger. And this uh, just, uh, have a significant uh, pain and numbness around the, the lateral aspect of the thigh. So this is the ASIS, this anterior. So when you actually dissect and uh, having surgery, the nerve is quite big. It gives you actually another things to think about. We are pain physician. When we do the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve in the perioperative setting, the nerve can be quite challenging to find. But when we are actually so refer a patient who have a true myalgia paroxysmica, they usually have the, the problem with the nerve, usually they appear quite big either because of a hip hugger or the, the obesity. So um, let's just talk about, so how can you find your nerve? Uh, I still like to actually find a nerve just close to your sartorius, um, the sartorius uh, over the ASIS for two reasons. One is this is the area where the nerve are insulted. So you don't want to just actually inject around here. Yes, you can achieve the nerve block but you want to put some steroid there. When you put some steroid, you want to be close to the site of pathology. So I still would like to find your nerve over there. Uh, second thing is actually, uh, so um, if this is actually still a little bit easier to find to start with, and in case you cannot find this, this is what the Dr. Morigo suggests. You can just uh, find the groove. So what you usually do is ask the patient to just abduct your leg so then you can see a groove between the tensor fascia lata and sartorius, and you feel the groove, and uh, because it's all fat filled and you can much easier to see the, the, the nerve over there. Just a caution with this, two caution. One is the nerve actually can be here to up to six centimeter below this ASIS. So uh, you, you just don't give up when you just search here, just maybe search a little bit further down. The second thing is actually, is when you see the nerve, when you trace it up, don't expect you just trace it up like this. Remember the cost of the nerve is actually like this. So when you trace it up, you need uh, to actually adjust your, the, 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 the direction or orientation of the probe accordingly. So we will talk about this in the workshop. Now, this is actually, uh, you can see, uh, this is a quite um, well-nourished patient. So uh, this is actually the subcutaneous layer. I compress a lot, it still have two centimeter there. So this is actually quite common when you see a patient with myalgia paroxysmica. You see a nerve quite big. So I just want to orientate you before I show you the video. This is the front, this is the sartorius muscle, and then the behind here is you're going to see the tensor fascia lata. So let's see whether the video works. Oh, it worked. So this is, you see the sartorius muscle here, the nerve right here, and when I scan more distal, and it starts to go, you see the tensor fascia lata. So between the tensor fascia lata and sartorius, this is a fat field groove. So you see the nerve is quite big. I'm scanning back now, so you see it walk back into the sur on surface of the sartorius. So when you see, well, it's not uncommon when someone have a true MP, the myalgia paroxysmica. 
you can actually see the nerve quite big. So I usually do with our plain technique. Um, so this the nerve here, star torus. So I put the needle here. I inject a little bit. So I'm not. I'm still outside the fascia. Then when I put my needle here, while I inject, I'm just be such a nerve. So you can see actually so the nerve have so many many fascicles there. So. So uh, if you want to know more, this actually is a fairly decent uh, review article published, uh, I think, 2011. Everything you want to know but afraid to ask, you can just uh, read this article. The next thing I want to talk about is the pudendal neuralgia. Um, by definition, this is the, uh, uh, the pain, the chronic pelvic pain involving the sensory distribution of the cause of the pudendal nerve. And that what it means is actually in the diamond-shaped the perineum between the anterior posterior. So if you draw the, uh, imagine there's two ischial tuberosity here. So it's in this diamond-shaped perineum where it's supplied by the pudendal nerve. The cause of a nerve is uh, it coming from the S234 and then it go uh, outside, outside or posterior to the sacrospinous ligament. So this is a green part of this is a sacrospinous ligament. And then here, this, and then it, it somehow is just uh, go between this, the green, which is sacral spinous, and sandwich between this and the sacral tubus ligament, which is a white one. So between these two, um, that, so this actually is not a very nice picture. Those, this one should be a little bit bigger than, than it's supposed to be. So, and then this uh, uh, pudendal nerve will go back to the pelvic wall along the fascia expansion of the obturator externus, sorry, internus. And then the, the obturator internus have a fascia expansion here form what we call an alcohol canal. So there, uh, the, 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 because of the cause here, so what you can see is the nerve can be actually entrapped between the sacral spinous and sacral tubus ligament and also in the alcohol canal right here. And there's a first possibility we call the subpubic angle, but uh, usually it's very difficult to perform injection. And in case, uh, this is actually quite common for those cyclists. And when they have the, the narrow, the narrow cycle uh, seat, they actually, the thing about this actually push on your subpubic angle. Um, it's quite common in a lot of literature. Those uh, police, when in France, a lot of police, they ride a cycle. There's a 29 incidence, 29 percent incidence, they get the penile numbness. And 30 percent, they got erectile dysfunction. So uh, that is actually is a quite common uh, uh, when you cycle a lot. It, press on the subpubic angle. I hope I won't scare you if you're cyclists. <laughs> um, traditional technique, we, uh, we do it, uh, we find an ischial spine because of the, the close approximation between the pudendal nerve and the ischial spine. But think about this. If the nerve is entrapped between this, the green one, the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrostubus ligament, the nerve are defined by the fascial plane, means between the two nerves, uh, two ligaments. So this is not a very good technique because it just shows you roughly about this tip of the ischial spine, you may find a fascial plane. X-ray won't tell you the fascial plane. I think the better technique is if we have a CAT scan, we can define, so this actually is the, the perfect side pelvic wall, this is the, the coccyx, say, uh, say, sorry, say, uh, the lower end of the sacrum, so you can see you can actually uh, draw the fascial plane here. Then you can see the sacral tubus and sacral spinous ligament. So yes, you can define the fascial plane with CAT scan. We can do something similar actually by having ultrasound. So the, scan, the, the, the key is actually we can scan all the way down and identify the ischial spine. How? Um, I think it's important to have a certain system in order to find the ischial spine. The first thing I would suggest is uh, to find a PSIS and just put a scan there, and hear what you, you, what you will see. You will see the sacrum, there's a medial, the lateral, you will see the eye quest, PSIS, all the way down. So the first scan is you find, orientate yourself in the ileum. The next thing to do is actually is slide all the way down to the sciatic notch, where you will find on the, on the inner side or medial side, there's no more, no more bone, because you are in the greater sciatic notch, and this is what we will see you will see the gluteus maximus muscle, piriformis muscle, the, the ischium, and do you know what's this? It's a big sciatic nerve. It's uh, actually deep to the piriformis muscle. Now, the, the next thing to do is actually, how do we know from here to here you are in ischial spine? 
The key is, if you look at the profile, uh, when you are in school spine, this ischium right now is curved. Why is curved? Because it forms the posterior wall of the socket, which is curved. But when you slide down, when you, you are in ischial spine, this one should be straight and long. That's number one. And the second thing is that when you're in the ischial spine level, the piriformis will be gone. So it's the second thing. The first thing is when you're in ischial spine, the tip of the ischial spine will connect to the sacrospinous ligament, which is not here yet, but you will see. And the fourth thing is you will see a pudendal, pudendal artery right there. So I just want to show you the, this is what you will see. So here you should see the at the post tissue, which is maximus, and that's it. And then you can see the ischial spine, which is uh, straight and long. And then you can see the mute extension, which is like a sacrospinous ligament. And there's no more piriformis muscle here because it's all gluteus maximus and then the sacrospinous ligament. And there's a vessel there. Um, I don't know if you can see, so that's the vessel. It's the same scan, I just show you the butt vessel. Um, it looks like it's a bit complicated, but just so let me repeat the four points. Uh, when you scan down from the uh, notch to here, you basically will see the ischial spine at the, at the level of ischial spine. This one will get long and straight. You will see a medial extension with the sacrospinous ligament. The piriformis will be gone, and you can see the pudendal artery. So it sounds like a bit difficult, but actually I showed this in one single video. So just like this is the same scan I show you in the, uh, in the sciatic notch, gluteus maximus, piriformis, the steel curve. You see a sciatic nerve there. Okay, so blame your eyes. This is a, don't blame your eyes. It's a 10 second clip. So you can see here long and straight, going to be, and here you go, get longer and straight. And the second thing is now, so on the middle side, there's a, a sacrospinous ligament. I tilt it a little bit to show you that's definitely, I'm not imagining there's a sacrospinous ligament. The gluteus maximus is here and there's no more muscle there. And there is a pudendal artery there. I'm going, going, going to show it again, because in case you blame your eyes. Here you go. As simple as that. Now, so, um, So once you know where it's actually uh, so uh, you want to see the pudendal artery. The pudendal artery actually is, is some, is can, a lot of time you see it on, on this is a medial, this is a lateral, so the ischial spine you see it here, but it, it runs a curved course. So you can see actually the curve over there and this actually you can find the pudendal nerve. So this is the pudendal artery. Uh, what you can recognize is actually if you find the pudendal artery, 90% the nerve is on the medial side of the pudendal artery. to me. Okay, so this is a script actually is uh, how to put a needle. So uh, just uh, actually this medial lateral, there's a needle, uh, ischial spine, sacrospinous ligament, you see the pulsation there is uh, the, the, the pudendal artery. So I'm trying to push my needle go just medial to the pudendal artery. Actually, so I'm pushing the nerve right here. I'm pushing, so it's not very really nice, but I, I back off. Um, There's a video to show, actually, uh, once the needle tip is here, you can see it when I inject. Okay, this is actually very important. You see the spread of the injector here? The, one of the key for success is if you, if you inject, you, you have to actually see the spread here, again, okay, between this sacrospinous ligament and sacral tubus ligament. If you don't see the spread, either you are inside the artery or you actually your needle tip is outside the plane, is one of the important predictors for success. I think I've done more than like a 600 of pudendal nerve block. I find that actually, if you don't, in, don't see the spread between the interligamentous plane, most of the time, either they, they won't get a block or they get a block, but they won't, it won't last long. So I think it's very, very important. Um. So what you inject, uh, I inject a local anesthetic. I don't use epinephrine because usually, most of the time, the nerve is quite ischemic. And then I inject some steroid there. I think I'm basically done. So in case you're interested, there's some feasibility study. And I think I'm going to conclude here.